The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, knocked out of whack. I just went home and cried for three days. A freak accident made it too painful to sit or stand. I stood like this, you know, at an angle. And her back wasn't her only problem. It's crippling emotionally because there's nothing anybody can do. Now see what straightened her spine. Is that not awesome? Is that not awesome? Plus, Sheila Walsh returns with a book she wishes she'd read when she was a child. Coming up on The 700 Club. Well, welcome to The 700 Club. A surprise drive-by yesterday, President Trump waving as his motorcade made its way through supporters sharing their love outside Walter Reed Medical Center. This show of strength appeared to confirm what doctors are saying, that the president is improving. How much do we really know about his condition? George Thomas has the details. Doctors overseeing the president's care say he continues to improve and could return to the White House as early as today. On Sunday, Mr. Trump briefly left the hospital to wave at supporters gathered outside the facility to wish him well. God bless our president! Some critical of the president's move, saying it may have endangered Secret Service members inside the vehicle. A White House spokesperson insisting the trip was cleared by medical staff. The president has been at Walter Reed since Friday, shortly after announcing that he tested positive for the virus. The White House initially said Mr. Trump had only mild symptoms, but it was later revealed that he was moved to the hospital after registering a fever and taking supplemental oxygen. His blood oxygen levels dipped again on Saturday. Pressed about the conflicting information, the president's doctors acknowledging that they wanted to give the public a positive outlook on the president's condition. I was trying to reflect the, the, uh, the upbeat attitude that the team, the president, that his course of illness has had. I um, didn't want to give uh, any, uh, any information that might uh, steer the, uh, the course of illness in another direction. Um, and in doing so, uh, you know, it came off uh, that we were trying to hide something, which wasn't necessarily true. The president posting this video on Twitter saying he's been learning a great deal about the disease. It's been a very interesting journey. I learned a lot about COVID. I learned it by really going to school. This is the real school. This isn't the let's read the book school. And I get it, and I understand it. Not clear when the president contracted the virus, but several people who attended last week's Rose Garden event, where he announced Judge Amy Carney Barrett for the Supreme Court, have now tested positive, as well as several members of his debate preparation team. Meanwhile, the Senate has postponed all floor activity until October 19th after three GOP senators tested positive. Still, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying confirmation hearings for Judge Barrett will still proceed as scheduled on October 12th. The vice presidential debate is still on for this Wednesday with one change. Vice President Mike Pence and his Democratic rival Kamala Harris will now be 12 feet apart instead of seven. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson is here to talk about the president's treatment. Uh, Lori, tell us what you know about that uh, treatment they gave him. Is this unusual? Is this extraordinary? What's the story? Well, Pat, during a videotape tweet on Saturday, the president said these therapeutics that he's getting are miracles. He said, I'm probably going to get criticized for saying that, but they're miracles sent down from God. He's getting three drugs that attack different phases of COVID-19, the disease. The first one he received, uh, a polyclonal antibody made by the, the drug company Regeneron, uh, attaches to the spike protein of the coronavirus and prevents it from uh, penetrating into the cells. The second one, an antiviral medication called remdesivir, prevents the, the viral cells from replicating. And the third is called dexamethasone, and it's a steroid designed to tamp down the inflammation, particularly inflammation in the lungs that helps people breathe better. All three of these have shown to be beneficial to COVID-19, remdesivir and dexamethasone methasone have actually been approved uh, for emergency youth authorization by the FDA. 
Well, uh, Laurie, let's talk about releasing the president uh, today. Does that mean he's he's recovered, or he's just going to the White House to to uh, rest for further uh, treatment? Absolutely. It's going, he's going to be monitored around the clock, and the doctors say he will continue to receive the remdesivir and the dexamethasone treatments. We do know, Pat, that, there, that there's particular concern because when people take a turn for the worse, statistics show that they do so between five and ten days following the first onset of symptoms, which we know for the president were, was on Thursday. So that he's going to be monitored very carefully, but he was released. Typically, people, uh, doctors feel safe releasing patients from the hospital if they haven't had a fever or the need for supplemental oxygen for 48 hours, which appears to be the case with President Trump. Uh, Laurie, this is a strange virus. It, 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 it affects every part of the anatomy. It, it affects the brain. It affects the lungs. It affects the vital organs. Uh, what are we learning from his illness? Well, the takeaway for a lot of us common folks, Pat, is uh, he was also given vitamin D and, vi and also zinc supplements. And we know that studies show that these two supplements do benefit people who have COVID-19. So one of the things that we can all learn is that we need to have uh, plenty of vitamin D and zinc in our system. And most Americans are vitamin D deficient. So take a vitamin D supplement. If you're not sure about your own vitamin D levels, you can get a blood test. Go talk to your doctor about that. Another big takeaway, Pat, from President Trump is uh, he had two strikes against him, his age and his weight. We know that as each one of these increases, so does the risk for severe complications, including death. Obviously, we can't do anything about our age, but we certainly can do things about our weight. And we know that the more overweight a person is, the greater chance for severe complications, including death, because overweight and obesity Obesity cause an increase in inflammation, they decrease our immune function, and they also cause more blood clotting in many people. Oh, one last question. What about shutting the, the whole economy down? They shut it down once. It seems to have um, deleterious consequences, but uh, uh, what is the deal? I, I heard one uh, expert, I think from Johns Hopkins, say uh, it's only in enclosed spaces where you get a load of um, of this uh, virus, and, but if you were, say, in an outdoor stadium, it's okay. And I've also heard various kinds of masks don't work. So. Tell us about some of those things, will you? Well, doctors say that masks do in general work, that outdoor is better than indoor, but even if you're outside and you're close to people and you're not wearing a mask, that can be problematic. Regarding opening up the economy, everyone wants to see the economy functioning properly, and most medical professionals say you can still go back to work and still get the economy going in a safe way, and that is keeping social distance, staying six feet apart from people, wearing a mask and washing your hands. And again, like we were saying, doing things to boost our immune system if we become ill. What, 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 what about taking those Pepsis? You, you aren't too high on them in terms of, of what they do to the gut flora, but the president's taking one of them now. That's true, and that's because sometimes that was a precautionary measure in case he might have stomach problems. But in general, you need to talk to your doctor before you want to take a medication like that. As you said, some of the doctors I've spoken to say those can be problematic, particularly long term. Well, thanks, Lori. Okay. Well, in other news, the Supreme Court begins its new term today, and since the death of Justice Ginsburg, it's a tied court. What impact could that have on upcoming cases or even a contested presidential election? CBN's Paul Strand brings us a look at what's ahead. The main religious liberty case involves a Philadelphia Catholic foster agency tossed out of placing foster children for the city because it wouldn't, for biblical reasons, agree to hand kids over to same-sex married couples. The question is whether the city has infringed on the agency's religious liberty. I think many of the justices think that Philadelphia, even if the Constitution didn't compel it, the city ought to have granted a religious exemption in these circumstances. A huge difference this term is the absence of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This likely means less power for the liberals she led and more for the conservative-leaning justices. And that's why all eyes are on the confirmation process of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Her record shows that she'll be a justice as she said, more in the mode of Justice Scalia than in the mode of Justice Ginsburg. 
And that's precisely what the Democrats are afraid of. Obamacare is once more on the line this term. The justices will decide if the individual mandate that forced Americans to get health insurance is unconstitutional. And if they rule it is, whether that then kills the entire Affordable Care Act. And that's the case Democrats are making their main argument against both President Trump and Amy Coney Barrett. They maintain he wants to kill Obamacare and she's the justice who would help do it. And a former Barrett colleague says it's ridiculous to assume her vote is already decided before the case is even heard. It is her conviction. And she told, she has said over and over again, whatever her personal, political or religious beliefs, her fidelity is to the rule of law first, foremost, and only. But until there's a decision on Barrett, the Supreme Court is split 4-4. That could cause real trouble if the presidential election is contested and the court has to basically pick the president as it did in Bush versus Gore. I think this will end up in the Supreme Court. And I think it's very important that we have nine justices. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from the Supreme Court. The last time the play was against the uh, Republicans, because they're going to take away uh, protection for pre-existing conditions. Now, the, Dem the Republicans had no intention of doing any such thing, but that was played, and the president was spending so much time talking about the border wall when actually so many of his uh, uh, Republican colleagues in the House of Representatives went down because of that one thing and so you're going to hear it over and over again. The Republicans want to take away protection for pre-existing conditions. You'll see ads. You'll see all this stuff. And that isn't true. The, the, the Republicans have a very robust plan that was brought forth in the House of Representatives um, to take care of this. And actually, they had a plan to replace uh, Obamacare. And uh, the Supreme Court, uh, you know, ruled it constitutional on a very flimsy ground. And um, they, they, then they've got the, 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 whether this uh, uh, individual mandate w is separable, whether, whether you can sever that from the rest of the law, or whether that one provision going down will take care of the whole law. That, that's what they're dealing with. So uh, it's, it's a little arcane, but nevertheless, that's the deal. And so uh, if, you, if you have um, a divided court the way it is now, it, it, it is probably it's in limbo. But with one more conservative, I think that uh, we'll see the end of Obamacare, which, of course, you know, you remember uh, John McCain, there was one vote. They had, they had all in the Senate, but it was locked in, and it was one vote, and, the pre and, and uh, McCain, you know, did this to it, you know, and he voted against it. Do you remember that was? I remember. You remember? Mm -hmm. And then he said off to himself, now let's see if that SOB can make America great. I mean, he didn't like Trump at all. <laughs> I mean, it was some personality. That it wasn't too pleasant. So in any event, oh, keep your eyes on what's going to happen. But I do think the Senate is ready to confirm uh, Judge Barrett. Just a question of how soon. And uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, Terry? Well, still ahead, knocked down by a dog. This woman couldn't sit, stand, or walk without pain. Her doctor couldn't help her. So how did she get back in action? But first, climate change. Is it all a huge hoax? And why is one meteorologist calling it the weaponization of weather? Joe Bastardi is going to be here to tell you himself after this. If you happen to watch 60 Minutes, as I do, and I think it's a good program, Scott Pelley had a very compelling uh, analysis of global warming. And uh, the man from NASA who predicted 2020 would be a time of uh, weather chaos. So it, it was pretty uh, uh, overwhelming what they had to say. But we have a guest that doesn't quite agree with that. We've had wicked weather, massive fires, and manifold storms. But is climate change the culprit for these disasters? Or is a hidden political agenda stoking the climate change movement? Take a look. Intense hurricanes, devastating tornadoes, out of control wildfires. Many believe all this destruction is caused by human beings and all the carbon dioxide we create and release into the atmosphere. But what if climate change is simply naturally occurring and cyclical? 
That's what meteorologist Jill Bastardi believes. Not only that, he believes there's a political agenda at work behind the climate change movement. He lays it all out in a new book, The Weaponization of Weather in the Phony Climate War. Joe Bastardi is here. And Joe, you, you mentioned something about H.L. Mencken. He said politics get elected by uh, scaring the people and then saying they have an answer to this terrible thing that's going to happen. <laughs> what do you mean by the weaponization of weather? Well, I coined that term in my first book a few years ago, and people have picked up on it, and you're seeing it being done. Anyone last night on 60 Minutes talk about the near record-breaking low year of tropical activity in the Pacific, which has four times the amount of the activity in the Atlantic on average? Of course not. As far as wildfires go, there were five times more acres burned in the 1930s where we had unbearable heat in this country. And what I do in my book is lay out chapter after chapter refuting the very things you were seeing last night. Now, I doubt Scott Pelley is going to give me a chance to get on and uh, do 60 minutes, but I appreciate <laughs> this. By the way, you know, in my books, I always have a standalone page. The first book had Abe Lincoln's quote about doing the best he can. The second, this book has the heavens declare the glory of God and proclaim the work of his hands, so, so, hands. Psalm 19.1. And Ecclesiastes 1.9, this sums it up for me. You see, Pastor, not only is this a political agenda now, but if you look at the, the opening of the Declaration of, the, of Independence, I don't care who wrote it. There is an absolute truth in there. God's absolute truth is in there, that you were endowed by your creator with certain inalienable rights, among them life liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And what has what has happened in this climate situation here? And I call it a phony war, because unless you've been in war, you shouldn't be claiming yourself to be a warrior. That's why the front cover is a satire the way it is. But what has happened here is you're seeing man's relevant truth, the view man has without perspective, going against an absolute truth. What is that absolute truth? Well, for you and me, it's God's in control. Now, does that mean we just trash the planet? Of course not. So there's actually a, a chapter in the book, and you're not going to see uh, skeptics' books offering, um, A, the spiritual matter of this. That's the first chapter. What's this all about? Uh, it's not only political, but spiritual, uh, in my opinion, okay? But also a solution to all this that will quell the fear whether you or I think it's irrational or not. The fact is we have to take care of our neighbors. If you have, I'll give you an example. I write in the book. My daughter, Jessie, when she was three years old, all she wanted was a life-size Barbie. We got her the life-size Barbie. By the time Christmas came around, she's coming into the room and saying, the Barbie's staring at me and ordering the nutcrackers to attack me when I go to sleep. Now, did I go into the room and burn down the room and take all the nutcrackers? No, I <laughs> removed the Barbie. What we do here is propose a way to remove the CO2 threat without crashing the economy, plant more trees, nuclear power, which, by the way, James Hansen, James Hansen and I agree 100 percent on that. Why aren't we using nuclear power? What are we still hostage to Jane Fonda, and the China syndrome? It's the United <laughs> States in 2020. And carbon capture is very good, too. And in addition, there are other measures to show people where the real polluters are in this world. It's not the United States. The United States, through, the, through capitalism, freedom and the way we do things, is reducing emissions. OK. Whether, whether they're causing it or not. Now, I happen to believe in a different cause. I believe in natural attribution overwhelms man's. Uh, man is not the climate control now. We never have been. We never will be, in my opinion. However, I'm sensitive to folks on the other side. I look at what they're saying. I can see why, if that's what all they looked at, that's what they believe. But the fact is, there is an infinite world in the majesty of the atmosphere out there that will counter these things. And I, I, I'd like our viewers to also let your kids read this because kids are having the, the wits scared out of them. It's not that complex a book, believe me. It, it lays out stuff. I don't get into all the theory behind CO2. It just offers factual weather, um, uh, weather counters to this hysteria that's going on. You know, 
This hurricane, by the way, there's another hurricane threat coming this week on the central Gulf Coast. Want to get that out. But do you know something? How is it a skeptic like me? On April 7th, we put out a map, my, my company. Not only did we predict a lot of storms, we predicted the United States to get hit. And we actually had the areas that were going to get hit. And, and you look at that, you look at what's going on in the Pacific, and you see it's a natural counter. Big year in the Atlantic, lack of a year in the Pacific. When the air is sinking over the Pacific Ocean the way it is, is nets what we call subsidies, it extends itself into the western United States, so it favors what we call a ridge position there. When there's a ridge position at 500 millibars, it gets dry, it gets hot. Now, as far as the wildfires go, you could tell you, you start me up, I'm not going to stop over here. But as far as, as far as the wildfires go, let me ask this question. Why is it in western Canada? This is, uh, in the last 10 years, one of the lowest years for wildfires on record. How does it suddenly change uh, at the border for some reason? So you, you've got to ask yourself, is that natural? Or there's some man-made influences going on. I'm not going to go into the whole, oh, there's arson. But maybe some of the practices, the fact that we've increased our population three times more in the West, and there's a lot more demand on water, a lot more demand on land, and force. But that's an example of what I'm talking about. People don't look at the entire issue. It's like it's being hidden from them. And I do believe that this, when, when you keep looking up, okay, you keep looking up, you got to realize, and I'm sure you do, that there's smoke screens today designed to get in your way of focusing on our Heavenly Father. I believe that, okay? Right. One is, uh, I think, this issue. So, an issue that I've loved since I was three years old. This is all I ever wanted to do. It's my it's my gift from the good Lord above, right? So all of a sudden, these people are coming in, and they're turning it into something it's not. Now, I'm not talking about the good scientist on the other side of the issue. I'm talking about this whole cottage industry of what I consider fake warriors that, oh, we're going to save the planet. We're going to do this and do that. Let me tell you something. In my opinion, the planet was saved about 2,000 years ago. Just that people have a debate over whether that's happening or not there. But anyway. Right. Oh, Joe, we appreciate it, buddy. The weaponization <laughs> of weather. And by the way, on, on uh, Thursday, uh, we've gotten Dr. Hugh Ross is going to talk to us about how the uh, Earth's axis may oscillate just a bit. And then what we're really looking at is a, another ice age which was a terrible thing. This is the most benign time right now with this heat because we can grow crops, we can have plenty of food, there's, there's plenty of transportation and so forth. With an ice age, it won't happen. Joe Bastardi is called The Weaponization of Weather, and this book is available wherever books are sold and is afforded here by our good friend Sean Hannity. Terry. Well, still ahead, she's the best-selling author who sold more than five million books. But we know and love her best is our friend and former 700 Club co-host, Sheila Walsh, joins us live. That's later on today's show. Up next, this woman took bottles of painkillers, but nothing gave her any relief. So why didn't she pray for her own healing? And how was she healed anyway? In an instant. Knocked down by her son's dog, Jean Jeffrey was completely out of commission. Standing, sitting, walking, all caused her excruciating back pain. So how did this once active grandma finally get her groove back? Take a look. Jean Jeffrey loves spending time with her grandkids and especially spending time outdoors. I play with the kids, I run with the kids, and I, I enjoy being outdoors. Then in December 2019, Jean was helping her son move some boxes when his dog knocked her down, hurting her back. Just doing things it just began to create more pain. Couldn't go to the chiropractor till the next day. And uh, he took x-rays and um, I just went home and cried for three days. The chiropractor told Jean she had scoliosis and her pelvis was 35% out of position. It had never caused problems before, but when Jean fell, that all changed. I had to stop running with the children and, and pretty much just ended up stop 
walking, and then it, it, it even got too painful to sit. Getting out of bed was difficult. I couldn't raise myself up. I couldn't stand straight. I stood like this, you know, at an angle. And I would have to just stand until I could let the pain pass. Jean couldn't afford to continue seeing her chiropractor, so she endured the pain. Just getting around her house was excruciating, and she had to sleep in an easy chair because lying in her bed was too painful. I'm not someone who's easily depressed or discouraged, and it was like that ended my life. I did not know what to do. And you can only take so many bottles of a leave, and, um, and that doesn't fix the pain. That just deadens the pain, but it doesn't fix it. Although a godly woman who often prays for others, Jean accepted the pain as part of getting older. But I didn't think of, of praying for healing. What I thought of was give me the strength to get through each day. As the weeks turned into months with no relief, Jean's depression grew. It's crippling emotionally, not just physically, but emotionally. I was at the point of feeling emotionally desperate because there's nothing anybody can do. Then in May 2020, Jean turned on the 700 Club, hoping it would boost her spirit. The 700 Club always made me feel good. In particular, I always love the uh, time of prayer because I've prayed for a lot of people. But God had something else in store that day. Someone, you have a deformity on your spine. God's healing that for you. He's just correcting it. Because it's a deformity that's been there so long, you haven't even thought to pray about it. But today, God's healing your spine for you, and you're going to know it. Your freedom to move is going to change. I accept that. I so accept that. I claim that for me. And I just sat there, and the pain left, left that side of my body. I, it was intense. It left. And I just sat quietly, just so thankful that my God hears my prayers. <laughs> Jean started moving her head and back without pain. Then she got out of her chair and started walking around, and still no pain. I was just kind of stunned um, because I hadn't asked God for healing. I just asked for strength to get through the day. So to stand up straight and walk into my kitchen without holding on to the door jams, without worrying I'm going to get a dizzy spell, that was euphoric. Euphoric. Jean had no more issues with her back and has returned to her normal, active self, enjoying life and taking time to smell the flowers. I'm happy again. I'm outgoing again. And I just love getting up in the morning. And when I get up, I thank the Lord for getting me up. <laughs> Is that not awesome? Is that not awesome? <laughs> but the biggest thing she loves is sharing how her healing has changed her prayers. If you expect, you have to live like you expect it. I would put things to God from the standpoint that if this be your will, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, you can't live life abundantly if you're crippled and in pain and depressed. So I changed the way I prayed by saying, I know it is your will that I be healthy and strong and resilient and emotionally stable. As Christians, we have to anticipate the healing, anticipate the abundance, anticipate whatever the prayer is, and live in that space. Jean has got the secret, doesn't she? Isn't I mean, you know, the Bible says that you have not because you ask That's not. Right. I mean, she's right. We need to pray with expectancy. Either to you, ask nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy might Maybe be full. full yes. Jesus wants us to have fullness of joy. What do you have? Well, this is Mary. She lives in Waukesha, Wisconsin. She fell off a ladder and injured her back. 29 years later, she still suffered from terrible lower back pain. She was watching this program on August 31st of this year. And Pat, she heard you say, someone, I believe the name is Mary, you have muscle spasms in your back and it's really been bad, just grabs you all of a sudden. This, this pain just comes. In the name of Jesus, we speak a word. That got Mary's attention. She believed, but she didn't feel any different. When she awoke the next morning, her pain was gone, and it hasn't returned since then.
We oh, have yeah. a God that loves us. Here's one. Her name is Moraine. She lives in Ocala, Florida, and she had kidney disease for two years. She was watching our program in kidney, and Terry said, someone has kidney issues, be healed. The neighbor's name is gone. Maureen can't explain it, but felt the power of God upon her, and she wept. And that moment, she felt like a ton of bricks was on her back. Afterwards, she had no kidney pain and hasn't had it since. Mm. God Almighty controls the world. And the word of God that he puts in our mouth is the same as the word that was in his mouth because he has power, and a man shall eat good by the fruit of his lips. Now, we're going to pray for you right now, and I want you to receive. And what uh, was said on this other is going to be a blessing for you. So I'm counting on a miracle taking place in your life. Father, I join with Terry, and we believe God. Somebody has a ruptured disc. It's always been so painful, and right now, There'll be like fire in your spine in the name of Jesus. Touch him. Receive an answer. Terry, what do you have? Now, so you have an infection in your ear. Um, it's kind of a weird low-grade infection. Like it's not always something that's painful, but your hearing has been affected by it. Just put your hand on your ear right now. God is touching you and that hearing is being restored and the infection will be gone in Jesus' name. Uh, your nasal cavities, something has happened to the bones in your face. Uh, and God, right now, put your hand around your nose and that, that part of your, of your sinuses. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's being cleaned out and it's being made whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, for those of this audience who are praying and crying out to you, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit be upon them. In Jesus' name, receive an answer. And may the power of God touch you. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we just want to pray for our president. We yes. ask you, God, for yes, God. healing for him, for that you would protect those around him from this virus, and that his healing would be complete, Lord God. And we just also um, would ask that this virus would become containable in our country and Amen. around the world for others as well. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We receive your answer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a treat for you right now. By the way, if you've received something from the Lord, please give us a call. If you want further prayer, it's, it's so easy. It's 1-800-700-7000, toll-free number. But tell us what God's done for you. We'd love to hear it, and we'd love to have other prayer. And so there are people on the phones right now who love you and have got the anointing of the Lord, and they pray for thousands of people, and they believe God for you. So all you got to do is pick up your phone. Real simple, 1-800-700-7000. Now, there's a special time that we have celebrated here at CBN for many years. I think it speaks of the second coming of Jesus. And we call it the Feast of Tabernacles. It began last Friday at sunset, and it will continue until sunset this Friday. And the celebration is called Sukkoth. And uh, there's a very talented gentleman named Gary Spell, who put together a wonderful thing he calls the Shema, uh, which is the name, Shema. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got the Regent University singers with Gary Smell. And uh, you'll enjoy this music vi video to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles.
magnificent. Now, that was Gary Spell's creation with the Regent University Singers. What wonderful voices. Oh, my goodness. Well, they're that's, beautiful. Yes. And Gary Spell is a musical genius, and that's <laughs> called the Shema. You, you heard it here. It's the first time ever shown on television. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Okay. Well, coming up later, a Monday round of your questions and some honest answers. Roberta wants to know, how do you receive messages of healing during prayers on the air? Stay tuned to find out. Plus, Sheila Walsh is going to join us live. Why has she written a book for young girls? And what does it have to do with her own personal struggles? She'll tell you herself. That's coming up. Welcome to Washington for this CBN News Break. Texas Pastor John Hagee has tested positive for COVID-19. The 80-year-old Hagee Pastors Cornerstone Church in San Antonio. His son Matt made the announcement during Sunday's online church service. He said his father tested positive Friday and is under medical care. He also told the church doctors caught it early and that Pastor Hagee is, quote, feeling well enough to be frustrated with everybody in a white coat and a stethoscope. John Hagee is also founder and chairman of Christians United for Israel. Well, deaf and hearing impaired children in the Russian-speaking world ha now have access to the gospel in their native language thanks to CBN Superbook. More than 5% of the world's population suffers from hearing loss, including 34 million children. That's why CBN has produced a special version of Superbook in Russian for children who are hearing impaired or deaf. The 26 episodes include a sign language translation on screen and are available on YouTube. Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com slash international. Pat and Terry will be back right after this. Well, let me ask you, do you struggle to know how to pray and what to pray? If you do, you're not alone. And it may surprise you to know that Sheila Walsh has experienced the same struggle. Take a look. Prayer has become more vital than ever to sought after author and speaker, Sheila Walsh. The co-host of Life Today with James and Betty Robeson is reaching out to young girls with a book she wishes she'd had at their age. I'd love to say, oh, through all my years, as I grew up, I became a great prayer warrior, but that's not really true. I often struggle to know how to pray and what to pray. Sheila wrote Praying Girls, a 60-day devotional to show young girls how to develop a meaningful relationship with God. Well, welcome back to the 700 Club, Sheila Wall. Sheila, how great to have you with us today. Thanks, Terry. It's great to be with you. Well, first of all, I just want to say how pretty your book is. <laughs> <laughs> Big seller right oh, there. <laughs> You've written so many wonderful books about prayer. I think it might be hard for people to imagine that praying's ever been a struggle for you. How have you experienced that? Well, you know, Terry, sometimes it's it's a question of um, do I am I just repeating myself over and over again? You know, is it something that um, if God already knows what He's going to do? Some people have said to me, "Why bother praying?" But but it's during, particularly during this COVID crisis, because I'm used to being out on weekends speaking and, and now, you know, no, I'm home. I mean, I have a jacket on on the top and I have my jammies on on the bottom and <laughs> it's been different. So I've had to ask myself, ask, ask the Holy Spirit, how do I live in these days? Teach me how to live in these days. And so in this season, prayer has become everything to me. And it's it's really about understanding. In fact, I wrote this in the book for young girls. It's, it's about a conversation with a God who loves you. People are all feeling pretty isolated with this COVID world that we live in today. But young girls are usually going through life issues anyway, just maturing, growing up, trying to figure out who they are. How is it especially hard for them? You know, it's interesting, Terry, because somebody asked me, why did you write a book, Praying Girls? You have one son. But it was like, well, I used to be a little girl. And when I, I wrote a book called Praying Women um, last year, and when I was recording the audio version of the book, I found myself thinking, I wish I'd known this when I was 11 or 12 or 13. And so that's when I began to sit down, because the main thing I want young girls to know is 
Jesus is the best friend you are ever going to have in your life. And you get to come as you really are into his yes. presence. You don't need fancy words. You just need you, and you can come on your best days and your worst days. You can talk to him when you're being bullied at school, when you feel insecure, when your parents are arguing. God just wants your presence. Mm -hmm. you, had, you held a Facebook Live event that really helped you write the book, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I did. And it was, it was so interesting because I, I basically asked moms and daughters, you know, what are the kind of things that, that you are interested about? And words came up, Terry that would not have come up when you were and I were 11 or 12. It's like, you know, kids are thinking about suicide. They're thinking about depression, anxiety. What does the future hold? And what I wanted young girls to know, I mean, the thing I took away from that is I want them to know God is still on the throne. Nothing that's happening in our nation or in your life or in your family is a surprise to God. And you know, it's like I was reading this morning before I came on Psalm 116, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. I want young girls to know God bends down to listen to your prayers. You know, for all of us, men and women alike, but I, I like you, think of young girls because I was a young girl once. But you, you do wonder, who am I in the, in the midst of the world and the bigness of everything around me? How do I figure out who I am in that? What's the main message of your book for young girls? The main message is that God is for you that God loves you. He made you. There's no one else on this planet like you. And you can navigate every single thing you're going through hand in hand with Jesus. Every morning during this pandemic, and I'll continue it, I go outside and I raise my arms up high. And it's just my way of saying, Father, I'm here. And, and, some is that, and for young girls too, to know some is the most powerful prayer in the world is one word, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you're connected to the God of all heaven. Yes, it's good to connect that name with help. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> We've both done it in our lives. It's a good message that yeah. you bring to young girls. Sheila's book is called Praying Girls Devotional, 60 Days to Shape Your Heart and Grow Your Faith Through Prayer. That's something we all need, but for young women especially. Thank you, Sheila. Great writing. Thanks, Terry. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. Well, Pat, we've got something else coming up now. Well, we do. I want to tell you about a woman who was pregnant, had no idea where her next meal was coming from. And that's what happened to a young mother in Mexico. Both she and her husband lost their jobs because of COVID-19. So where did they turn for help? Take a look. When COVID-19 hit the nation of Mexico, more than a million people who were working at the time lost their jobs. People like Blanca and her husband, who was out looking for work the day we met. I used to work as a housekeeper, but due to the pandemic, I lost my job. Blanca is also pregnant and taking care of her sister and her new baby. I can't go out and just look for a job. It's too big a risk because of the baby. It's so frustrating. We really need the money to buy food. When Operation Blessing learned about the need in the community, we sponsored a food program through a local church that prepared and delivered more than 200 meals a day for an entire month. Now, thanks to the meals, I don't have to worry about what my son and my sister-in-law will be eating. We also gave families a gallon of chlorine bleach manufactured by Operation Blessing Mexico to disinfect and keep their homes safe from COVID. I don't know how to thank you. I'm eternally grateful and I hope God will repay you. I hope God will repay you. It's so nice to be able to help people. It really is. And that's Bianca's uh, menus or uh, meals. Uh, but we help people all around the world. You know, he distributed to the poor his righteousness will endure forever. We help the poor and the needy because we care. And when you give to the 700 Club, what you're saying is, I care. And you know, I've always wondered, how will it be to sit down to a table full of food with the biggest garbage cans that anybody could imagine, and all kinds of food being wasted, and people starving all around the world. 
And we can help them. We can't do it to all of them, but we can help a lot of people. And if you join the 700 Club, you're becoming part of an army of millions of people who care about loving their neighbors in as much as he's done it unto the least of these, my brethren, he did it unto me. So I want you to join, if you would, the 700 Club. What does it take? It's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day, pocket change. But all of us together can make a difference. So $20 a month, some of you can go gold, $40. Some of you can go $100 a month, well, whatever. But please call now. And those who call, Gordon has put together something that's really tremendous, the name of God. The, the, the name in Hebrew is, is the, the word to be, and it, it's I am. And, you know, you fill in the blank. I am whatever you need. So I am Nisi, I am Shalom, I am all these things. And Gordon has amplified for you the name of God, and it will be a great blessing. We'll send this to you as you join the 700 Club. So if you pick up your phone and call 1-800-700-7000. Okay? Time for some questions. You ready? Let's go for them. Okay. This first one comes from Roberta, who says, How do you receive messages of healing in Jesus' name during prayers on air? Well, uh, there are certain of the revelatory uh, enablements of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and one of them is known as the word of knowledge. It is not, there is knowledge. You ask God for wisdom and knowledge. That's a different thing. But this is a specific word about a specific thing that is not uh, perceptive by the senses. And it's one of the enablements, the so-called charismata, uh, is called the word of knowledge. And when you pray, that's one of the things, you know, Paul said, earnest to desire the better gifts. And so that's one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is Thad who says, Pat, why do you end prayers by saying amen and amen rather than just amen? I watch the show every day and I've always wondered. I love your show. Well, you might ask, why did Jesus do it? Because it's verily, verily, I say unto you. And in Hebrew, that's amen, amen. Mm -hmm. So we translate it verily. It means let it be true. Let yes. it be true. Amen. That's what amen means. Amen. <laughs> so, amen but, but he said, verily, verily, I say unto you. So, so we just picked up on Jesus, and, and, and we're giving you the Hebrew, okay? Right. This is Shay, who says, Dear Pat, should a church be political on views such as voting and voter fraud? I recently expressed the voter fraud issue on our church website, and my pastor removed it, saying the church doesn't want to be political. What are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts is that... Um, uh, we are to render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. What do we owe to Caesar in, a, in a, a democratic form of government? We owe him enlightened citizenship. And so there's absolutely nothing wrong, in my opinion, uh, in, in informing church members about the issues confronting them. But at the same time, I want to caution you, you don't want to become a, an arm of a political party and suddenly all you talk about is politics. We, we, our job is to prepare people for the kingdom of God and to help them along the path that gets them there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the government is so important. What they can do to you can hurt the church and hurt Christianity very much. And you look at the, the Nazis and others, uh, you know, Hitler said, um, your job is to get people to heaven. You leave the government to me. The answer is no, we won't. All right. And maybe someone like this, he says he put it on the church website. Maybe you should post that on your own. Yeah, well, I mean, so you know, the, the, they've got those laws about uh, involvement, but I, I, I think the Johnson Amendment uh, is not being enforced right now. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you what Robert has to say. When you get to heaven, won't you be sad when you notice a loved one is not there? They didn't make it to heaven? Oh. Uh, well, I was reading another one. Give me that again. I'm, I'm sorry. giving you a shorter one because our time's running out. When you get to heaven, won't you be sad when you notice a loved one is not there? Uh, they didn't make th it. There'll be no, no, no sorrow, no, no, no tears in heaven. And uh, uh, we will be so much in the presence of God, it'll overwhelm us. And uh, you, won't, you won't have a consciousness that'll bring you tears. There'll be no tears and no sorrow in heaven, okay? Mm -hmm. well, we'll leave with today with the words of Jesus from the book of John. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Well, tomorrow we've got the health benefits of fasting. 
Josh Act is going to join us, and Lori will be interviewing Josh about what he wants to do. I always enjoy when he's here. He's, he's got wise guy. counsel. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, and Lord willing, we'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Bye-bye.